Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to do the arm and restore of Oracle database in Windows on a different server, what we also call, call as a DB cloning, migrate the database from one server to another or create a database from, from production to non-production such as test or lower development environment. Now the catch here is the, the file structure or the drive letters or the physical structure of the 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 the, uh, the the drives do not match the source so if your database or the source server source database server is located on a d drive you don't have d drive on the target server if you are taking the backup in e drive the e drive the backup drive is no longer there on the target server so when you restore the database you need to take care of telling Oracle database that where you want to place your database files, where you want to place your, where you want to place your uh, control file, where you want to place your redo log. If you don't tell this to Oracle, Oracle will try to restore the database on the same location as your source server and that is going to fail because you don't have the similar structure. And that is what we are going to see how to restore a database on a different server with a different file layout on a different file structure let's get started so first thing that we will do is like we need to create the init p file from sp file this we will do on the source server this particular file needs to be transferred to the target server we will also take the backup of the database backup database plus archive log you can take level 0 or level 1 backup as per your choice but you can <coughs> for simplicity we will take the backup database plus archive log we also need to transfer this particular backup now these are the files that we will be transferring to the uh, transferring to the target server p file that, that we created from the create p file command the password file of your database the database full backup database control file backup database archive logs these are all the files that we will be transferring the on the target server now here at this moment you can safely log off from the source server your work on the source server is done so you can log off from your source server rest of the activity that we will do is on the target server so let's get started so we will create the directories on the target server we need to create some directories such as audit file dash the directory for the data file the directory for the control file directory for the log file and the directory for fra db recovery file dash these are the directories that we will create on the target server. Now, once the directories are created, first thing that you need to do is create an Oracle service on the target using RRDIM command. So you will say RRDIM new SID name of the SID, which is nothing but the instance name, start mode, P file, the location of your P file where you copied from the source server. Now, then you will you will start with the restore the database, but before restoring the database, you will change the init parameter file to point to the new location of fra to point to the new location of your control file so you will change some of the parameters in the init file and you will see this when we go do the actual exercise you will see that so then <coughs> once the init file is changed sorry once the init file is changed you will start the database in no mount mode then you will restore the control file then you will open the database in mount mode you will set the new name for database and temp file you will restore the database you will rename the redo logs you will switch switch data files and name file you will recover the database and you will open the database using reset logs these are the steps that you will be taking now here is the important part before restore you will be setting the new name this this command will tell oracle where you want to restore your database and temp file you will rename the redo logs this command will tell where you want to create your redo logs then you will switch the data file and temp file and then you will recover the database and finally you will open the database using reset logs let's see the commands so first thing you will start the database in no mount mode then you will restore the control file so here is the command start the database in no mount mode restore control file so you will start in no mount mode you will restore the control file then you will open the database in mount mode here is the command here is the statement then after the database is open in mount mode you will run this run blog rman run blog where you will allocate the channels you will set the new name for your your uh, database you will set the new name for your temp file you will restore the database you will rename the you will rename the redo logs you will switch data files you will switch temp file and you will recover the database once the recovery is completed once you have done this you will open the database in reset logs mode at this moment your database would be restored successfully on the target server so let's 
go ahead and do these steps in detail. So now what we need to do is before, before doing something, let me connect to the database. Remote, the database is hosted on a remote server called Win16. So let me connect to that particular database. I'm connecting to the remote database. This is the database and I'm going to, I'm going to do something here. So I'm, I'm going to clear this for you. And what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to connect to the database and before connecting to the database, what we need to do is we need to set some environmental variable in, and that is nothing but the Oracle SID. Oracle home, Oracle base. So this is the instance name. This is the Oracle home. This is the Oracle base. Now, what I'll do is like, I'll connect to the database SQL plus as sysdba. And what I'll do is like, I will try to select from a table called employee. And let's see if this particular table is there. So you can see we don't have this particular table. And what I'll also do for you is I will launch another window and I'll tell you uh, what kind of OS is this. So this is, so let me say system info and find str name. And this one will give me the name of the machine. So host name, which is win16. And this is Windows Server 2016 data center. This is an evaluation edition, by the way. This is not a full version. This is an evaluation edition. And we are using Windows Server 2016 data center. Now here, <coughs> but what, what will be, what we have done, what we are going to do is before taking the backup, I'll connect to this particular database from, from uh, SQL developer. So let me connect to this and let me run some queries and uh, let me actually verify that I'm connected to the same database. So let me run this particular query, which will tell me that I'm connected to the database, which is hosted on Win16. And I showed you that this particular database is on Win16. So this is the database that I'm connected to. The name of the database is Aura 19D, which is in read write, and it is hosted on Windows machine. And and as you as you have seen before, that we don't have a table called employee. So what I'll do is what I'll do is I will create that particular table from SQL Developer. So I have a table called employee, which has, which has got three columns: employee ID, employee name, and date of joining. And let's say first employee joins our organization called Rock. So the Rock has joined our organization. Let's commit that transaction. Let's, let's see if Rock has really joined. And you can see Rock has joined our organization at 7.10. Now let's go back to the SQL developer, sorry, SQL plus and run the query. And you can see here we got a message table or view does not exist. But now we have got a table and we got a new employee called Rock who joined our organization. So this is the same database that I have connected here. Now, what I'll also do is I will show you and keep a note of this. I will show you the location of the data file, which is D drive or our data, show you the location of control file, which is also D drive and see the location of log file. So let's run all of these three commands. And you can see everything is under the D drive, D drive or our data log files, the control files and the data file all good. Now, what we are going to do is we are now going to create Oh, and before creating the p file let me go to that location where it will automatically get created so it will be get it will get created in the in the in the um, oracle home database location and I, you can see that particular parameter from show parameter sp file so it will tell you where is your and you can see c drive oracle v19 database database this is where the sp file so when i say create p file it will get created automatically in the same location same location. So let's do that. And what I'll do is like keep an eye on the background, keep an eye here in the background. I'm going to run a command called create p file from sp file. And when you when I run this, you can see automatically a new init file got created. We need to transfer this particular file to the destination, the target server. So the two files that we need from here is the init file and the password file. So I'm going to copy that into a shared location, which is accessible on the target server. So I copied that this too. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to take the backup of our database to take the backup of our database. As I said, I will be running the command backup database plus archive log. Again, you can take the backup in a different way as per your choice, but I'm going to take my backup as this. So let me connect to the R main target. So let me clear the screen. Let me say R main target. And let's say backup database plus archive log 
Now, before running this particular command, I, I actually, I want to show you something. Let, let me do one thing. Let me open another command prompt because I've already typed that command. Otherwise, I'll have, to, I'll have to type that command once again. So let me set the environmental variables once again. And let me clear the screen. And what I'll do, I'll connect to the RMA target and minimize all of this. And what I, what I wanted to show you is like, I'll show you a para, show all. These are the RMAN parameters. And you can see here, configure control file auto backup is set to on. Now, this is very important. Make sure that all of your production databases has got the control file auto backup set to on. Now, how to change this particular parameter? If I wanted to make it this off, or if I wanted to change this particular parameter, you will just take the same command and you will say off. And then when I, when I, if I do the show all now, you can see the control file auto backup is on. However, I, I as a best practice, want to make sure that it is on. So I'm going to change it back to on. Now, what, what, what is this actually is this, <coughs> this parameter tells the RMAN utility how the backup will behave. So here, when I say control file auto backup on, what it actually means that every time a backup of the database or backup of archive log happens, it will automatically take the backup of control file automatically. It is called auto backup. And also I have set the channel for the disk, the, it is the channel device for type disk format to this location, which means when I take the backup, automatically the backup will go into this location. So let me go to this location. Let me copy this particular location and let me go to that location. And if there is any old backup, I'm going to, and there is nothing in that particular backup folder. So what I'll do now is I'm going to minimize everything, keep this window open. And here is the command that I was trying to run. And I'm going to run this particular command, backup database plus archive log. Keep an eye on the background screen. What will happen when I run this particular command? It will automatically take the backup of archive log. It will take the backup of the database. It will take the backup of auto backup of your control file. So all of these files will come in the background. Keep an eye. And you can see in the background, the backup is start, started running. And right now, all of the files have started appearing in the background folder. So let's wait for this particular backup to complete. Okay, so we, and you can see it did the control file as, as well as SP file auto backup. Now what we are going to do is we are going to, uh, for safety, it doesn't harm, but for safety, take one more archive log backup. So we will say backup archive log all, you know, take one archive log backup uh, for safety. After the backup, take one archive log backup as well. Now what we are going to do is like, we are going to transfer this particular backup to the shared location. At this moment, our work on the source server is done. We can safely log off from the source server because we have transferred all the backup file to the target server. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to disconnect from this source server. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the target server. And on the target server, I don't have the Oracle service at all. So here, <coughs> let me, okay, so let me, see yeah let me delete this particular file for us so and uh, okay so what we are going to do now here on the target server is we are going to and before doing that let me connect the oracle is already installed but there is no database that is no oracle database and we are going to restore the database that backup that we took on this particular system and i'll show it to you so let me set the environmental variable and once that is done, let me say a SQL plus as sysdba and you will find that I'm not able to connect. And you can see it is giving the TNS protocol adapter error. Keep a note of this particular error. Now, what, what, what I'm going to do is for, first thing that we need to do is copy the backup images that we have copied from, from the first server. So I'm going to copy that. And before copying that backup images, I need to place this init aura into the Oracle home location. So wherever you have installed the Oracle, you have to place that and I have installed the Oracle in C drive V19 database and database. So under this database, copy the two files. One is the init file and one is the password file. Copy these two files. So that's done. We have copied these two, two files. Now what we will do is like before, before creating the instance, we will edit this particular file and see what, what I wanted to show you is like, if you remember this particular query, the our database data files is under the dead redo this is the redo logs so let me show you the data file that they are into the aura d drive aura data 
The control file is in the D drive or our data and the log file is also in the D drive or our data. However, on my target, there is no D drive at all. And if you remember the backup, it went to the directory called E drive. The backup went to E drive and here I don't have E drive. So neither the backup directory is present, neither the, the, neither the directory where my database was hosted is present. So I don't have similar. And what we are going to learn here is how to restore your database in such scenario where you don't you don't have a matching file layout so now that we have seen this scenario let's go ahead and and before restoring i also want to show you so if i run system info here and if i say <coughs> find str name you will be able to find that this is a windows 2019 data center so it is win 19 and windows 2019 data center so this is the different com operating system so from Windows 16, we are restoring to Windows 2019, Oracle 19, but on a different operating system. Now, what we are going to do, and I'm, I'm going to run that particular command once again, and we are getting a TNS error. Now, what we need to do is we need to launch the command prompt as an admin, and we need to create an Aura Deem service. So we need to create a service using Aura Deem, Oracle service using the Aura, Aura, Aura Deem. So to do that, what we will be running is like we will be running this particular command and I'll explain what, how that command works. So RRDIM new SID name of the SID start mode manual P file and the location of your P file. But before we actually do this, let me go to that Aura file, open it with a notepad and modify some things in that particular file. So we don't have the D drive on this machine. So let's do one thing. Let's change it to the what directory we have. We have H drive. So let's place our database in H drive. So I'm going to change this to H drive. And I'm and I'm also going to change. Let's do one thing. Let's actually take this entire and change it to H drive. So wherever there is a D drive, let's change it to H drive. So let's do those changes. So that's done. And what we are going to do is like we are going to create this particular directory because we need to we need to be able to so we need to be able to restore the database into that particular directory so we will create that particular directory so make directory h drive or our data so that's done so you can see h drive or our data or our 19 d fra so the directory that we created is or our data or our 19 or our the fra for the fast recovery area and or our 19 for the database files so that's done we also need to create this adam so let's do that if it is already created no harm but if it is not we'll create it so let's do that and that's also done so we got everything created so let's save this particular init file the changes let's verify that that init file got saved as per our requirement so now yes h drive h drive that looks good so everything looks good so now what we will do is using the aura dim using the aura dim we will create this oracle service using the aura dim command we will create the oracle service we have to run this command in admin mode so that's i'm running that and instance is created now you can safely close this window and come back to this and here you got the tns protocol adapter error let's run the same command once again and this time you should be connected to idle instance looks like our instance is created now this is the first step the next step is what we need to do is we need to say startup no mount so we need to start up our database in the no mount mode now this is the first time the database is starting on this particular server because we just created it it will take some time i'm going to pause it let's pause it for a second because i do not want to waste your time and i'll come back as soon as the instance is started if you if you go back to the video you will you will realize that i stopped it at 721 and i came back at 72 so it took almost one minute to start this instance but however the instance has been started in the no mount mode so that looks good so everything is good now so now what we are going to do is we are going to connect to this particular database in rman so let me set the environmental variable here and the first thing that we need to do after the mount mode, the no mount mode is we need to restore the control file. To restore the control file, we, we have we copied the backup files actually. And I don't think so we have copied the backup file. So let's see if we have copied and we have not copied the backup files. So let me copy the backup file on another drive called iDrive. So let's me copy all of the backups of that database. So let's me go to the 
shared location and copy the backup files. So I'm copying all of the backup files. Now, let I don't need this init file and I don't need this pass, password file because that's copied already. So I'm going to delete this two files. I don't need these files. Now, what we will be doing is like, first thing that we need to do is we need to restore the control file. So let me connect to the R main target and we will restore the control file. And where the control file will get restored, it will automatically get restored in the H drive. And why is that it is getting restored in the H drive is because when we when in the control file we specified the control if you look at the sp file init file you specified that the control file will go to the h drive or our data so automatically when we restore the control file it will get restored in the it will get restored in this particular location and that is determined by the init file control file parameter now let's go back and go to the rmen target and let's say restore control file so this we are we are here we have done this we have transferred the files we have created these directories we have done this and we i have started the database in no mount mode and we are going to restore the control file so we are here so we are going to restore the control file to restore the control file you need to know the command and the command is pretty simple the command is actually and i'm going to form it for you so the command is restore control file from from and you will put the this in the quotes and it with a semicolon and wherever you have stored the backup go to that particular backup location and take the auto backup of your control file so take the backup of your auto backup i'm going to take this control file and now that i have formed this particular command now that i have formed this particular command is it's time to it's time to go ahead and run this particular command in the rman prompt so let me minimize all of this And I'm going to say restore control file from this. And before doing this restore, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to keep an keep a note on the background. When I restore, when I run this particular command, automatically two files will get created: control 01 and control 02. And those are our control files. And you can see in the background two control files came: control 01. And here it said H drive aura data aura 19D, H drive aura data aura 19D, control 01, control 02 those two files got restored so the control file restore is done now if you try to restore your database at the, now the, after restoring the control file you need to put the database in the mount mode so let's do that now after putting the database in mount mode you if you after putting the database in mount mode if you actually try to restore the database it will not work and do you know the reason of why it will not work because the backup and i'll show it to you so if i now run a command called list backup so let me exit clear the screen connect as r man and if i run the command list backup you it will it will point to e drive because our backups were in the e drive so you can see all of our backups are in e drive so it is trying it will try to look for a backup which is in the e drive however on this particular machine we don't have e drive so the when it try to restore it will look for the backups in the e drive and it will not find those backups it will not find this backup which means the restore is going to fail and i'm going to show it to you so let me say restore database and it will fail and you can see no backup found you it, it oracle is not able to find the backup which means that the information which is there in the control file is of no use because it is of a different location what we need to do is we need to get rid of all of that information so what we are going to do is we are going to use the command cross check backup cross check archive log so we are going to use these commands we are going to cross check the backup we are going to cross check the archive log and then whatever is the expired backup and expired archive log we are going to delete it from the rmen so let's run those commands actually so first thing is we are going to cross check the backup and cross check the archive logs that's done and now if i do the list backup all of the backups should be in the expired state so you can see the status is expired all of the backups will be in the expired state now it's time to get rid of the expired backup so you will run the command so we have done the cross check so we have done the cross check of the backup cross check of archive log now we are going to say delete no prompt expired backup delete no prompt expired archive log so i'm going to do that And that's done. And now if I, after deleting, if I say list backup, you will be able to find 
that I don't have any backup in the control file. Now it's time to tell Oracle where is your backup. So now it is it is time to tell Oracle where is your backup. And to do that, you will say catalog start with commands and you will specify the directory where you have stored the backups. So I'm going to do this and if ask for a prompt and I'm going to say yes, catalog start with the location of the backup. I'm going to say yes. And now after this, if I run the backup, command it you will be able to find that all of the backups are available so now we got the new backup information and it is pointed to the i drive backups where we have kept our backup so this is the way how to tell oracle where is your backup so remove the old information and get new information added to the control file now you should be able to now we are in the step where we should be able to restore our database now before restoring the database let's see if i have so let's say I'll put a temp here. So let's run this particular command. And what I'm going to run, and I'm going to not, I, I'm not going to enter this command. So I'm going to explain this command for you. So let me exit from this. Let me clear the screen. Let me connect as our man. Let me make this particular screen a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this command. And here you can see what I'm telling Oracle is set new name. And we are here right now. So we, are, we have restored the control file. We have opened the database in mount mode and we are going to tell Oracle where is the database files, where is the time file, then we will restore the database, where you, what is the name of the redo logs. So we are setting the name for the database files, setting the name for the time file, renaming the redo logs file, switching the data file, switching the time file, recovering the database. This is what I'm going to do here in this particular run block. So you can see here, I'm allocating the channel, setting the new name to hdrive or our data, Set, restoring the database, renaming the logs to the from the D drive to H drive, switching the data file, switching the time file, and recovering the database. So now, if everything is good, then I should be able to restore this database. So and before doing that, let's keep an eye on this directory. Keep an eye on this particular directory. So when I hit the enter, automatically all of the files will get restored in this location. So let's do that. And you can see in the background system sys, sys docs all of those files came and right now it is restoring and give it a minute One, after this it will create a temp file then it will create the redo logs in this particular so right now the rman restore is happening so you can see it is restoring and once this restore and recover so the command that we ran and i'm going to show it to you once again here is the command that we ran restore Re rename and recover and once all of that is done it's asking for this missing log you can ignore it so now if i if you <coughs> if you try to recover if you open the database in reset logs mode so let me exit from this clear the screen and let me connect as sql plus as dba and the now if i keep keep an eye here again once again and i'm going to say alter database open reset logs And you can see that redo logs got created. And now what I'll do is like, I will try to connect to this database from the remote system. So let me, from the SQL developer. So let me put the same and let me change this to Win19 because this database is on Win19 and change the IP address to point to the new. Let's see if test, test is successful. Let's say connect. And we should be able to get this employee table in our restored database. So let's verify that. And you can see, our employee who joined us at 7.10 and here I'll show you that same employee 7.10 is present in the target database. Now, if, if a new employee joined the source database, it will not come in the target because we took the backup and we restored it. So whatever changes we do on the source machine, so you can see now on the source, we have rock and water. However, on the target, we have only one employee rock. We don't have the, the second employee called water because the, the water was inserted because we did the backup and restore. So whatever we do the changes on the source database, those changes will not reflect reflect on the target. And I'll, I'll show you something more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this query here. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to take all of these four commands on here as well. So <laughs> what I wanted to show you is like the source database is hosted on Windows 16, on Windows NT, Windows windows machine and all of these files are in d drive d drive or data the this is the data files these are the control files these are the 
log files which are everything is in the d drive if you go to the target machine now uh, before running this the source data source is on win 16 the target is on windows 19 so you can see it is on windows 19 it's a completely different file system completely different os and if i run the data file you can see the data file here on the source it is in the d drive however on the target it is on the h drive similarly the control file is also on the h drive and the log file is also on the on the h drive so the all of the files we were able to successfully restore all of the files from the source machine on the from to from the, from the source database to the target database on a different drive so from the d drive we restored it on the h drive so this was a short tutorial on how to restore the oracle database from one server to another server a db cloning when the server file structure don't match and at the same time remember we also did a restore from windows 2016 to windows 2019 so we also upgraded the os so if you if uh, for some reason the operating system says windows 2016 is end of life and you need to upgrade the database to a different os uh, with a higher version then how do we do that and on a different os with a different file structure how do you do that and that's the way it's pretty simple you use the clause of set new name so these are the set new names and you rename the relogs and you switch the data files and time file that's all you have to remember while doing this particular restore i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope you learned something new i hope this particular tutorial will help you in your work environment if you ever need to do the restore thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial Keep enjoying your life and see you. Bye-bye.